Sandra D was beautiful and talented from a young age. Her modeling and film career began early, and while her popularity went up and down throughout the years, she remains a well-known public figure. Unlike most celebrities, Sandra only had one high-profile relationship with singer Bobby Darin. They were in love, but eventually divorced before his early death. Stay tuned to learn about the many ways that Sandra Dee's life was not as glamorous as you might think. Early Life Alexandra Suck was born in New Jersey on April 23, 1944, to John Suck and Mary Symboliak. Along with her grandmother, her parents raised her in the Russian Orthodox faith. Sandra was beautiful, good-natured, and intelligent. Her mother enjoyed dressing her up and would occasionally keep her from school. She experienced tragedy at an early age when her stepfather, Eugene Duvon, first molested her when she was five and raped her when she was eight. The abuse continued for years, but she didn't reveal it to her mother until decades later. It was also a major contributor to the eating disorder she developed at nine. Career Sandra was a shy, reclusive girl from an early age. She claims she never wanted to become a model or actress, but was pushed into it by her domineering stage mother. Sandra's career started when she was young, when she landed a Girl Scout modeling gig that started when she was eight. That turned into a lucrative job that earned her $78,000 a year by the time she was 11. She was also working in local commercials by this time. Her mother helped her get roles, but she rode the subway by herself to gigs. She also went to the professional children's school with future stars like Tuesday Weld and Carol Lindley. Sandra met producer Ross Hunter in 1956. Hunter claims to have discovered her at the age of 12 on Park Avenue in New York City. She arrived for a screen test days after her father died. He was entranced by her beauty when she arrived crying. He was the one who came up with her famous nickname, made by shortening her name and using a last name based on her stepfather's surname initial. She was signed for her first film, Until They Sail, in 1957 when she was 14. Despite being inexperienced, she earned a Golden Globe for New Star of the Year. It was clear the success of these films didn't calm her mind, and the signs of Sandra's later struggles with body image were already on display. She had to wear a rubber suit behind her clothes while filming Until They Sail because her body was underdeveloped and she'd already adopted a starvation diet. She had no problem with the suit because she loved the curves it gave her. She signed a contract with Universal Studios after graduating from Universal High School in 1958, but her big break came in 1959 when she earned roles in movies like Gidget and A Summer Place. This led to roles as innocent ingenues in a long list of teen films in the 50s and 60s. The most successful was Imitation of Life, which earned over $50 million and was Universal Pictures' highest grossing film at the time. She earned the nickname Queen of Teens, became a popular pinup girl, and was voted the 16th most popular star in the country in 1959. Sandra appeared on the Quigley Publications Top 10 Money-Making Stars poll from 1960 to 1963 and ranked number 6 in 1961. The 1960 thriller Portrait in Black catapulted Sandra to 7th place on the list of biggest stars. The 60s saw her replacing Debbie Reynolds in the Tammy series of films, but her appearances didn't do as well at the box office. To keep her career trending upwards, she even recorded a few singles in the 60s, including a cover of When I Fall in Love. Sandra lost her contract with Universal in 1965. She was both the last major star to work under an exclusive contract and the last actress under contract with Universal Studios. The drop came as her popularity began to dwindle. Sweet ingenues like Sandra were no longer a popular draw for moviegoers. Her only major film in the 70s was The Dunwich Horror, but she also found roles in made-for-TV movies and TV series like Night Gallery, Love American Style, and Fantasy Island. The release of the movie musical Grease in 1978 brought her name back into the public consciousness. It included the song Look At Me, I'm Sandra D," and its lyrics mocked her innocent image. Despite its tone, she took the joke well and wasn't offended. Her final appearances included another spot on Fantasy Island and the film Lost in 1983. Her final acting credit was a voice-only appearance in an episode of Frasier in 94. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. And keep watching to learn more about the tragic yet seemingly glamorous life of Sandra D. Sandra D and Bobby Darren. 
Robert Casoto was born May 14, 1936. He eventually developed an interest in singing and took on the stage name Bobby Darren. He became a teen idol with songs like Mac the Knife and Splish Splash. Bobby met Sandra D on the set of Roman Holiday in 1960. He was immediately taken with her, but she wasn't that impressed at first. She was put off by his cocky nature, but that eventually changed as he matured. Her mother convinced her to go on a carriage ride with him, and he finally showed his genuine emotions. She was enamored, and they were married on December 1, 1960, after only knowing each other for a month. Despite that, she said she never felt safer than when she was able to wake up next to him as her husband. They appeared in three films together, Come September in 1961, If a Man Answers in 62, and That Funny Feeling in 65. Bobby also wanted Sandra at every one of his Las Vegas casino gigs. She was captivated by the city's lights and glamour and began drinking and gambling excessively. The relationship began to fall apart, however, when he became convinced she was having an affair with Peter Fonda and asked for a divorce. That only lasted until December 16, 1961, when they had a child named Dodd Mitchell Darren. Despite this, the relationship ended again in 1966 due to her addictions, and this time they stayed apart but remained friends. Bobby Darren always believed he would die young due to his sickly childhood, and unfortunately he was right. He died of complications from open-heart surgery at age 37 in 1973. Sandra never remarried. Their son wrote a book about their relationship titled Dream Lovers, The Magnificent Shattered Lives of Bobby Darren and Sandra D. A biopic about their lives titled Beyond the Sea was released in 2004 and, despite its painful honesty, she purportedly gave it her blessing. Eating Disorder and Addiction Sandra's son Dodd says his mother never realized how talented she was and never felt content unless she was working and successful. She once said she was only good at walking on the stage with a pretty dress. She also felt pressured by studios to maintain her innocent image. They would hide her drinks and cigarettes because, in her own words, Sandra D. isn't supposed to smoke or drink or breathe. All of this, along with the abuse she'd suffered as a child, led to years of addiction and a twisted relationship with food. Sandra became addicted to the amphetamines her doctor prescribed her after she had her son, and she would always reach for a drink when she needed to calm down. After her mother died in 1988, she would drink over a quart of scotch per day. Neither the public nor her family saw her for some time after that. Her weight stayed at 80 pounds while she secluded herself at home for three years. One day, Dodd found her in a coma after eating walnuts and drinking Epsom salts until she became sick. She later told him it was a way to punish herself for eating. He helped bring her back from rock bottom and convinced her to see a therapist. She eventually gave up drinking after being diagnosed with kidney failure in 2000. While this was a positive step, it wasn't enough to save her. Death and Final Days Sandra was on dialysis for the last four years of her life. She died of kidney disease two months before her 63rd birthday on February 20th, 2005. She's buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in L.A. Now it's time to hear from you. Have you seen Sandra D. on film, or do you only know her name from that sarcastic song on Grease? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.